Uh, what I have for you today is a DC power supply. Uh, this was sent to me to give my opinion on it, make this short video. I'm going to show you how to use one of these DC power supplies for your home projects. So it, what comes with the power supply is the box itself. It's got a power cable plug in the wall. And then it's got some sample leads here, but you'll notice these are really thin. So if you're going to do something with any higher amperage, you're going to want to have a thicker cable than that. Uh, the unit also has uh, the ability to plug these in using like a banana plug type, type plug like this. Or you can just spin these and then put your connections behind. Or you can take them all the way off and then you can put connections on perhaps that have a, a, a hole like this uh, with a loop and then you can set them on there and then tighten them down. This unit's a 30 volt system, a total of 300 watts at 10 amps. So the current or this amp line here uh, will go up to 10, 30 on the volts. You turn it on and you get the display like this. Right now it's set to three volts and zero amps here. So I'm going to go ahead, you've got two buttons. One says current, this is for your amps. One says voltage. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this to say five um, volts. And then I can adjust my amps from zero all the way up to 10. Now, how might I use this? This can be great for charging batteries. Uh, take a look at one of these smaller, this is like a, Moped battery, scooter battery, 4x4, very tiny battery. Gives you instructions right on the top here. It says charging time. Uh, if you did it at 0.4 amps for 5 to 10 hours, uh, that would be your slow um, charge. Uh, if you want to do a rapid charge, you could put it at 4 amps and then give it about 30 minutes. Um, one is going to take a little longer, but it's going to be slower. It's going to be less heat. It's going to be less wear on your battery. And it's telling you that your charge voltage should be between 3.8, 13.8, and 15 volts. So for this one here, if I'm going to charge it, I'm going to pick a voltage, say, probably 14.5. And then I'm going to decide how long am I going to charge for. Do I have a, a time to sit it overnight? I could put it at just 0.4 amps. Uh, or if I've got a rush and I only have 30 minutes, I might crank it up to about 4 amps and then charge it that way. Uh, here's another battery. It's got the same instructions. This one's just a little bit taller. They're all about the same, but this is just a little bit larger. I know that this one needs a charge, so I'm going to go ahead and set it up uh, like it was recommended. This is a 12-volt battery. So if I uh, choose here to set the amps, uh, let's do the um, slow charge. So I'm going to zero out that. And I'm going to pick it up to 0.4 amps like it was recommended. Then I'm going to go up top and I'm going to set this to 14.5. And that's ready to go. So now I'm going to connect it up. I'm not going to use these really thin little things that they gave me. I'm going to go use a little bit of a thicker cord here. And this one here, the, the eyelets on here, uh, unfortunately, they're too small to fit on those posts. But, but I can always do it here on the side because you can screw these down uh, and grab onto raw wires real easy just by doing like that. So I've got my, my red and I got my black. If you had a ground as well, you could use the green in the center. Tighten this up. All right. So now I got both my cables on nice and tight. Got the settings the way I want. And with this DC power supply, when you're ready to go, you just push the output button and it'll start to output uh, that amount of electricity. So now with these two uh, clamps here, I'm going to grab onto the battery with my minus and my plus. And then we'll observe what the gauge is telling us here as it's starting to apply power through the cables to this battery here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press output. And so right off the bat, you can see it's taking four amps, but now it's dropping down. I'm putting out 14.5 volts. And what's gonna happen is as the battery can accept power, that amperage is gonna slowly decrease all the way down. So when this battery is really dead, it's gonna 
hold that four amps. It's going to put a lot of juice into it, but as it gets to the final part of its charge, then it's going to start to slow down and that's going to start to, to drop. So we'll see that um, slowly come down here little by little till you get down to, to, to very little. And now you're in a kind of a maintenance mode. And so you're doing basically like a trickle charge onto the battery. These um, built-in trickle chargers here, like this battery tender, uh, you can see this here has a 12 volt at 1.25 amps. And that's what that's putting out. So it's very little charge and it's a small amount of amps. It's going to just keep a battery topped off so that it doesn't wear out on you and it doesn't have that sulfication and all those other problems. Um, but that's going to do the same kind of thing because it's just putting a small amount of amperage um, through the line onto the battery. And that has some sensing as well. So as that's working and it feels like the battery's topped off, it'll stop producing. Um, something else that you can, you can find with this power supply is it's really cool for uh, trying to diagnose problems you might have with electronics. So if I was going to do some testing for uh, accessories in my vehicle, then I could hook this up to the um, um, connection points on the power supply and use this cigarette lighter 12 volt port uh, to do some testing on perhaps a CarPlay device or a stereo or radio that I want to connect into my vehicle and you need a DC power source, then here you go. You can use this for, for something just like that. Real simple. Um, also, if you've got other electronics like these LED lights and you're trying to troubleshoot them, well, you could figure out, you know, this has got two um, batteries here, 1.5 volts each, so about a three volts. And I can set this up in a similar way. I'll go ahead and stop uh, the output on this charge for now. Remove that. Go with the little banana plugs here. And I can connect those banana plugs up to the um, plus and the minus on these batteries uh, connection points, just like this and like this. Then I'll go ahead and update uh, my settings on the power supply. Let's take this here up to, let's go to just like half an amp. I don't know exactly how much this little device would care about, but I'm definitely going to take that down to three volts like that. And then we'll go ahead and turn it on. And then we get illumination on our LED lights and everything's there working uh, as expected. So if I felt like these were getting too hot, there's too much electricity going through this very, very thin line here, I might reduce the amperage a little bit on the setting here. You can see it's taking very little amperage uh, through to get to these lights to produce um, the light from these LEDs. So pretty cool, easy way to troubleshoot electronics using a device like this. I turn it off and break the connection and you can see that no amperage is flowing and we're back down to zero here. Uh, another way you can, you can experience this is with a testing light like this. This is for a car, this is for chasing wires and bad grounds on a vehicle. You could take um, one of these things. It's typically gonna wanna have 12 volts. So if I connected this up to the power supply, grab on like this, and if I turn it on, uh, let's go with, let's start with about five volts, and we'll put it in at, um, we'll put an amp like that, and then we'll go ahead and, and turn it on, and right, oops, Turn it on here again. Um, and right here you're seeing you got five volts, no amps are flowing, but it, when I ground it out, it's gonna start to show me a reading. But look at my, my light here. This is my testing light on a 12 volt system. It's really dim, really dim because I've only given it five volts and very little amps. So I'm gonna go ahead and up that. Go to seven. You see, it's getting a little brighter. And I can even do this on the fly. Push it. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Here I am at 12, which is really what it's expecting. And in a 12 volt system, you're gonna get that nice bright light there. 
and that's how that would work. If I dim it down, let's go back down to five. You know, can barely get any electricity through here at five or four volts. So that's a way to um, really visualize the voltage coming out of this power supply. Another thing you could do uh, is if you've got a light bulbs that you're uh, testing here, it's just simply using um, the banana uh, plugs here with these alligator clips. I can connect it on here. Um, this one, if I if I look at the very small print on the side here, it's going to show me how much voltage it needs. And we can put that precise amount. So this is saying, it might be hard to read on the video, but it's got 5.5 uh, volts and 1 amp is what this is looking for. So let's go ahead and give it that. We'll turn the output off. I'll change this to 5.5, like that. And we've got the one amp set. And then I'll go ahead and do the output. And now I'll go ahead and touch the uh, negative here. And we're getting that nice bright light as expected. And then you can see the voltage start to pass through uh, and indicate that, yep, I'm taking just about all of the five volts at one amp. One amp is passing through uh, the whole system. No problem there. You can test the accuracy of these DC power supplies by using something like a multimeter like this. And you can um, you know, set your multimeter to the number and then I've got this on output. Go ahead and push this here, I should see the same number. So I've got this thing set at five and a half volts and I'm showing five and a half volts coming through the multimeter. So that's one thing you can do to verify the output. You might wanna do that at different levels of um, power coming out and see how it does. And then um, one last thing you could you could experience with a, one of these power supplies, you're getting familiar with how it works and everything, is if I plugged it in like this, and I connected up one of these automotive type fuses to it. And if the automotive fuse, say I've got a five amp fuse, is it really working? I could do a little test and see. So this is here. These are small. This is a um, two amp fuse. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and set this. I'm going to put this to 12 volts. Right there, and I'm going to set it to two amps, like that. And now let's connect this thing up. I'm going to bite with the alligator clip onto one side and onto the other. And you can see uh, the little uh, fuse portion here, that little wire in the in the center there. Hope you can see that. I'm putting two amps through the system. Very little voltage is going through. It's, t it's totally accepting that through the um, wire here. Not a problem. But now let's increase uh, the current, take that amperage up, and at some point we're gonna see it pop and it's just gonna, it's gonna blow. Yeah, probably in front of this black we'll be able to see it. It's gonna blow that fuse. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll crank this up and blow that fuse here just a little bit past the two amps. Here we are at three. Now we're at four. At five, you see it getting hot and you see smoke coming out of it and then pop. It just blew that fuse. So it only took about five amps to blow this little two amp fuse. Um, you, that you know shows you the importance really of making sure that you've got the right fuse for the device you're using, if it's a radio or whatnot. You put in a fuse that's too high, then it's gonna take a while to blow it, and then you're not gonna have the performance that you need to save that piece of equipment. And here you can see the plastic just melted a little bit there um, from that fuse blowing. So, so all kinds of things you can do with these power supplies. It's a pretty handy tool to have, they're really compact. They've got a, um, a fan in the back, so if it gets too hot, 
you'll see it start to run this fan, but you've got to really have it running for quite some time at high amperage for that to ever kick in. They're very much silent. Really nice to have this on your bench. If you've got anything going on with electronics, you're trying to test um, a system here and you don't have the right battery or you don't have the right power supply for it, you can adjust and set this for however you need it. This even got a cool feature here. If you need to charge your phone, you can charge it right here. It's got a built-in USB plug. Just plug it in there like a regular thing for your phone. And that's it. Hey, I uh, hope this video was helpful and I hope this information was useful to you. And as always, I hope you have a great day.